In this video I'm going to demonstrate the Cell Shader 2 Photoshop action. I'm going to be using this photo here in the example. We're going to be running the action to create this effect. Uh, there's a lot of different ways we can make uh, customizations to it. Uh, a lot of ways we can change the color and we can also separate all um, different parts of our photo. Like you can see those red splatters there. Uh, we can move those parts out, recolor them, so a lot of flexibility there. So I've got a few more examples here. I had this photo, created this. You can see I've heavily uh, manipulated all the colors and I've uh, moved some of those red parts out to give it a bit of texture. This one here, um, I just made a bit of a compilation using all the different stock photos and I ran the action on each individual photo, uh, applied all the same colors and sort of built this design uh, out of it. So. Uh, as part of the video, this video tutorial, I'm also going to show you how uh, I did this. So a few more, a few more examples. I had this guy here. Created this. And lastly, this one. And created this. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to close these all down. So here we have our base photo. And like all my other actions, just make sure that your background, uh, your photo lay is set as a background. So it should look like this. You can't just manually rename your layer background because that uh, won't work. So it needs to be set as a background. So to do this, for example, if you open up a photo and it's called something else, you don't see that background text in the lock symbol. Just head on up to the layer menu, go to new, background from layer, and we'll set it as a background. So still inside the layer panel, up the top right hand corner here, hit that one, go to panel options. Just down the bottom, make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is selected. If that isn't, then the action won't work. Click OK. Uh, next, go to image menu, go to mode, make sure you're in RGB color mode, 8 bits of channel is selected. So what we need to do now is uh, create a new layer. So go layer, new layer. And this must be called brush, B-R-U-S-H. No capital letters. Uh, if there's one capital letter in there, the action won't work. So that must be spelt like that, click OK. So with the brush layer selected, we need to brush over the area of our photo that we want to apply all the main effects around. So if you hit B on the keyboard, Get your brush out, um, use the square brackets to adjust the brush size, like that there. Um, use a soft or hard brush, doesn't matter, I'll just use a soft brush. And pick a colour, also doesn't matter what colour you use. And you just want to start brushing over your photo uh, around the areas that you want to define. So uh, I've just brushed one over, oh, sorry, I've brushed over that photo already in this example, just to make things a little quicker. So you can see I have my uh, brush layer here and I have to find the area that I want to keep and apply all the effects around. So what we need to do now is uh, light up the actions panel. So you have a window, actions, and uh, the panel will pop up here. Head on up to the top right hand corner, go to load actions, select uh, cell shader 2, the ATM, and it appears here. So this is all you need to do to uh, set up the action. So uh, the action runs for around two to three minutes. So as usual, I'm just gonna click play and then fast forward to the result and talk about all the ways we can make changes um, to the design after the action's finished. Right, the action stopped and you can see that this is the default result you'll get. Uh, there are all the uh, default colors and but like I said, we can make a lot of changes to this. So let's uh, let's get into it. So I'm going to minimize this actions panel. And if you look inside the layer panel here, uh, the first thing we want to do, like my other actions, is collapse all these folders. So with the folder that's already selected, hold down Control Alt or Command Option on a Mac. Click on that arrow, and you'll see that it's just collapsed all the folders. All right. So if you want to run the action again, uh, I've left the, black, the brush layer on, so you can just delete the cell shader 2 folder, 
and click play on the action to get that running again. So if we go inside this folder, uh, we'll talk about all the different folders and layers here. So I'll come back to this top one, but uh, this one here, overall saturation, if we double click on this one, you can play around uh, with the overall saturation of the design. So if you want it black and white, you turn that down. But by default, it's up around there. You can quickly um, preview other colors by dragging this hue uh, slider around. But I'll leave that at zero because there's other different ways we can color this. Uh, this layer here, use original photo color. So, zoom in a little bit. So, if you want to use the original colors um, from your photo, flick that one on, and you can see that's um, replaced it with the photo, uh, the colors from our photo. All right. So, uh, but for this example, we're going to make a lot of changes to the color. So, I'll turn that one off. Use a single color. If you flick this one on, it fills it with a uh, yeah single color, and you can double click on this box and play around with different colors. Now one thing to note about this layer, you'll see that if I move this down into dark purple, it's not changing. It only really changes to the main color group uh, that you select. So if you want to make, say if I want to make it pink, but I want to make more saturated, uh, just use this top adjustment layer here, uh, overall saturation, and play around with that. And you can also quickly preview other colors this way as well, just like that. Okay, I'll turn that one off, and okay, so going on down, what I might do is uh, turn all these folders off, and I'll flick these folders on one by one, and I'll tell you what's uh, what's going on here. So we have this folder here called Shadows. So these are all the darker areas of your photo uh, in the area that we defined. And each, in, uh, inside each of these folders are multiple layers. And so for example, in the Shadows folder, all these uh, different contours are broken up onto different layers. So if I move them out to the side, you can see that there. So we've got the ability to move these around uh, wherever we want to adjust the appearance of our design, make it look a lot more abstract. Uh, we can also uh, color each individual section. So the highlights we can color, midtones, midtones two, and the shadows. So for example, inside each one of these folders, uh, is a layer to color it. So if you just double click on this box, you can play around with the saturation. You can adjust the hue, like that. Um, what we'll do, we'll come back to that, and I'll just flick on these other folders, and I'll show you how this builds up. So then you have Midtones 2, I'll turn that one on. And again, if you go inside, there's a few different layers that we can move around. Uh, if there's, you can experiment with by turning them on one by one. Maybe you just want that, maybe you want that. Um, each photo is going to be different. So just play around with turning them on and off one by one. Uh, see what you get. Might leave that one off, for example. Midtones one, I'll turn that one on. Again, it more lays inside. And then we have the highlights. So these are all the brighter areas of your photo uh, that are in a single folder. So move that folder out to the side. And that uh, pretty much completes the um, default effect. So like I said, you can go inside and recolor each one of these, these groups, just like that. So I might just leave it there. I can go inside midtones too. I might flip this one back on. Yeah, I'll turn that one on. Turn it, uh, manipulate the colors here. Midtones one. Just take notice that in midtones in mid one, um, the default saturation is quite low. You can turn that right up to make it brighter. You can also play around with the lightness like that. You can make it dark, black, and white. So play around with all these handles here to get uh, a color set that you're happy with. And again, the highlights, we might want to make this gray so I could drag the saturation all the way down. Um, I could boost the brightness up a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So I'll come back to these folders. Um, this layer here, add noise, just by default, uh, it was off. 
So it just adds a little bit of noise. I'll turn the opacity up. It's got quite low opacity by default. If I turn it all the way up, you see it adds noise over over certain contours of the photo of the design. So you can drag this down so it appears in different areas if you want. Leave that there. And this folder here, edge details. If you turn this one on, these are all the lines that help define. Um, all the different areas, all the different cuts within our photo. So if you go inside here, there's three different layers. So by default, this one's turned off. So I'll just go down here. So this layer here, contour lines, I'll just hide the mask. So you can see that mask is just defining it to the area that we brush. So it, the lines only, only appear around this area. I'll just hide this mask for a second. So if I move this out to the side, you can see that's overlaying all these uh, lines over our photo, and like I said, just helps define those areas. By default, the opacity is set to 55%. Uh, you can turn that up or down. Um, so there's that one. Shadow detail uh, works in a similar way. I'll hide the mask again. If I move this out to the side, it just adds a little bit of uh, shadowing helps define uh, particular areas. If I move this away, you can see the detail in her face is lost quite a bit. And if I push that back, you can see um, the outlines are much more prominent. This one here is a combination, uh, it's basically a duplicate of these two layers onto one. If you turn it on, it just really cranks up the overall definition. So um, what you want to do, you can play around with like turning um, just trying different combinations, you might like that one on its own, that one, or that one, or that one, those two together. And also when you're playing around with this um, folder, just uh, when you're flicking them off, just take notice of how, uh, how the design looks in like different areas. Like say for example, you might not like the lines around the leg, so uh, what you can do, you can use this edge details mask. Whoops. Select it, grab a uh, black brush, and you can brush away in there. So you can hide all those lines around the leg area. Okay, maybe you don't want it on the foot, and brush that away. So there's a lot of control um, where you want it to appear. You could adjust the overall opacity of this, this layer by selecting the folder and adjusting the folder opacity there. All right. So now I'm just going to uh, move some of these cuts around so we can so to build up the effect of it. Um, so I'm going to go inside Midtones 1 for example. Now what I like to do uh, and what I encourage you to do as well uh, for a really quick workflow, if you click on one of these layers and if I hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and if you click and drag down it makes a copy of it. So what I can do then uh, is move that layer around so to do that again, I'll just hold down Alt, click and drag down, and I can make little changes, like I can move that there, I can grab this one, move it there. You know, you can just quickly make copies of them and move the parts around. And what I also like to do, so if I copy this one down, move it out to the side, as I'm moving them around, I like to erase areas that I don't think are working. So I don't want that, uh, that little bit to appear over her face, so I'll just hit E on the keyboard, get my razor out, and I'll just brush that away. So this one, I'll drag a copy, move it down, I take a look at the design and see what areas I don't like. So hit E, don't want this area here, it's gone. Alright, so I'm just going to jump into Midtones 2, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to select any layer. Some of these layers might not work, so if I'll, I'll try this one. So maybe you're not happy with that one, so just delete it. Try another one, move on down, move that to the side. So you can really build up some cool looking abstract um, designs really fast by uh, using this method. That Alt, click and drag down, move it around, uh, erase the areas that you don't want. Just like that. So I'm going to move this one to there. So the way that the color works in these folders is that, uh, 
So mid-tones two. All these layers here are affected by this layer, okay? So if I just double click again and drag that around, we can quickly switch up all the colors. Now, if I drag one of these layers above that layer, it's no longer affected by that one there because it's above it. So I'll move that around, it's a totally different color. So what you do here, which is pretty cool, is like um, drag, say you made a copy, you can drag it above there. And say I want this, this one particular layer to be a different color. What I can do is just hit um, Control U, bring up the Hue and Saturation uh, window, and I can go Colorize, and I can drag up the saturation, and then I can play around with this Hue slider again, so I can color that one individual cut. Um, so I thought green looked pretty cool. So you're not restricted, so don't just don't think that when you're recoloring the layers that you have to stick with that color. Um, you can just move them above uh, this layer and hit Control U and recolor it. So I'm just going to raise up a little bit there. All right. Okay. So this is looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is go back up to the top, and if I I'm just going to minimize these, I'll come back to the background layer. So we have this layer here called Reveal Original Photo, and if you brush into, if I actually, if I, um, if I turn this folder, this layer on and off, you notice it does nothing. It's because the mask is black, which means it's not letting it show anything. So if I just invert to flip to white, you'll see that a lot of the original luminosity from our photo is shining through. So I'll, I'll just undo that and redo it. But if you look at her face, you can see how a lot. It's a lot clearer in that area. So uh, what I like to do with this layer is particularly on people, if you just grab a um, white brush, select the layer mask, and if you brush into that layer, you can reveal some of the original luminosity from your photo. So, and that's great to use for, um, for you know, details like eyes, um, just details that you wanna make a lot clearer. So like her shoes, I can clear that up a lot more. Maybe not there, but um, in the next example in this video, I'm going to show you again how that can be used really well for eyes. Um, so, okay, so what we have now is the background layer. I'll turn that one back on. So if you just wanted to, uh, yeah, have a solid background, you turn that one off, okay, the background layer off, and it falls down onto this base layer. So from here, we can um, just change the color to whatever you want. So I have it like a gray. But we'll talk about the background folder, so turn that one back on. So by default, this is the setup we have. I'll turn these ones off. We have our background layer here, and above it is the background color. So if you double click on this, uh, you notice that the default saturation is quite low, so you can turn that back up if you want. Uh, but if you want to, you can play around with this hue slider, so, and you can color the, the background uh, that way. Or if you wanted it more of a solid color, hit colorize. You can drag the saturation up, play around with it that way. If you want it black and white, gray scale like that. Uh, drag the saturation down. And we can also, I've also got this layer here, uh, or these two here are background line detail one and two. If I turn these two on, uh, I'll just hide these masks. These two, very subtle, I'll turn the opacity, the default opacity is quite low with these, if you turn them up. All it does, it adds um, all this line detail into the background. So you see at the top right hand corner here, that's our left hand corner, if I turn that one on and off, you see the lines there. So if you wanted to have the lines on for the background, I'll just leave those two on. I'll turn them off to, for this example. Uh, this layer here, background color tint, if you want to apply an overall tint, you can just use this layer here, uh, play around with the colors that way. So I might, okay, so I might leave it like that. So a few other things I like to try is um, just to experiment is, you know, I might be with, happy with these colors, but I like to then flick on these folders one by one and see, um, you know, if I turned off the, the shadows, 
doesn't look good how the shadows are removed and falls down onto the background colour here, like that. I think it looks cool, particularly down in this area, like along her back and um, down here. So what we can do is um, if we use this mask here, and if we invert it, it's like we've hidden the entire shadows folder. But what I want to do, I want to brush back in only where I want the shadows to appear. So um, if I hit B to get my brush out, uh, white brush, and I'll brush in, you know, I only want the shadows to appear there and just a little bit here. So now um, that's all we have visible in the shadows folder, it's just that little section. All the other dark areas are falling down onto our base layer. Or if you want it to fall down onto the original background, just turn the um, base off, just like that. All right, so just get in the habit with this action to you know constantly flick around between different folders, turn uh, turn layers off one by one, see what you know maybe uh, again. I don't want these lines on on the knee area, so I can just use that mask, brush that away, just make small little tweaks, um, you know, duplicate these layers, move them around. Some will work, some won't, like I said, so that one's not working too well, so I'll just delete it. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is uh, open up another uh, another example and uh, I'm just going to explain how, uh, where is it, this one here, how I created this. So I have opened a, another example here and I'm going to talk about how I went from this. This is just the default result. You can see if I flick the cell shadow 2 fold on and off, you can see the before and after there. So we're going to take this and create uh, these blue tones. You can see uh, the image there that we're going to be using and make some changes to that and talk about how I recorded the colors to apply quickly to all these other uh, photos. So we go inside the Cell Show 2 folder, uh, jump inside the Highlights folder. Now you'll notice that inside each one of these folders we have the layer to, <coughs> excuse me, to recolor them. If you double click on these, the values that you want to record are these three. So um, I obviously experimented for a little bit to work out what colors I wanted to have this design in. So, and then I record them all. So for example, um, the highlights color here, what I've written down was 45, 27, and 31. The mid-tones one, I have 199, 53, 0. Next, uh, 193 and 44. And then into the shadows, I have 184, uh, 0, and 8 just like that. So if I wanted to open up another image now, um, I have written down those, those values on a bit of paper. I can quickly click into those folders, type them in, and you'll have the exact same color across the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. So um, what I don't want in this image is a background. I need to export uh, my subject on a transparent background. So to do that, all you need to do is flip off the background, the base layer, and turn off uh, the main photo background. So now everything's on a transparent uh, background. So I could export that now as a PNG, uh, but what I want to do is, uh, as I talk, talked about before, um, duplicate those layers to create a more advanced look. So I'm going to go inside Midtones 2, Alt, click and drag, move these around. Now, I don't want any of these over the eye area, so I'm just going to hit E on these layers to erase them. This one, E, 
Um, I'll try the highlights, see if any of these work. You know, something like that, okay? Now, uh, I want to quickly check out the edge details. I'll flip the folder on and off to see what looks good without those edge details. So I might just erase uh, all the lines around the neck area. So I'm just gonna use that mask again and brush black into there to remove it. Just like that, I'll go inside, I'll flip this one on. Might turn that one off. I'll turn the opacity of this one down. <coughs> Like that so I'm happy with that I could now export that save that out as a PNG so I did that with all these different elements I just applied the same colors spend about you know two minutes quickly uh, moving so if I zoom in here you'll see like here I just you know duplicate some layers move them around given that uh, extra bit of detail and when you start stacking all these images together it just makes the overall design look a lot more detailed um, when you do it that way. So yeah, I just created a new Photoshop file and uh, all I did then was just import all the PNGs. So I'll do that now. Uh, this one. I just place that there. Uh, next one, here's the face that we just did. Have that one a bit bigger. And you can just reorder these layers. Like that. Uh, the eagle. Scale it down. I'll flip it horizontal. Now I need to move this to the back. Scale it down a little bit more. Move that to the side. So you can see how quickly um, it is to build up these designs, and without this action. To recreate this on each, on each individual photo could take uh, a lot of hours, if not days, so um, it's a real time saver. And so, yeah, that's it. If you, uh, if you have any troubles with the action, just uh, shoot me over an email and I'll help you out. Uh, but if not, experiment with it as much as you can, because uh, you can come up with some really cool results really fast. Okay, thanks.